Welcome back to RP1 release, and it's time to get into manned spaceflight because manned spaceflight gives us a lot more money. For the money that we're actually talking about, don't look in the available tab here where you get things like this, which has got a lot of money for satellites. Look in active. In active, you have all these different records, just like we had the uncrewed version. We still have uncrewed altitude records, uncrewed speed records. These will get as we're going towards orbit. Uh, then we need to get these crewed records done, and uh, they will give us a bunch of money on top of this. So we want to get something built for that. So we're going to head into the vehicle assembly building and see if we can build something. Now, we don't have a command pod yet. We do, however, or we did, just unlocked the X-1. The X-1 happens to have a supersonic cockpit, and that lets us deal with, well, let's just say suborbital flight. It seems to, to be pressurized, and uh, we can start with that. So why don't we go on and get that started? So you can see here I've got this X-1 cockpit. It says validated flight at speeds, speeds exceeding 400 meters per second. That's a good, good thing. One problem turn on center of mass when any man pod turn on center of mass that's not good <laughs> if we leave this pod as it is it's going to flip and point down and this is going to be aerodynamic and you know what that will look like that will uh, just hit the ground really fast what we actually want is this bottom section to come into the air and slow everything else down above it so we're going to have to do a little bit of modification to this and to modify that what we're actually going to do is just grab ourselves a fuel tank small one uh, and a cheap one we're going to pop that underneath you see that moves the the center of mass down well we're going to move it down even further we're going to show the user interface and bring that down and add some lead ballast to the bottom we could use something else i suppose but uh lead ballast will do the job and i don't want that much maybe 150 updates okay so now our center of mass is right at the bottom of this upper section uh, we can't ever detach this fuel tank because it's full of lead. If we detach it, it will flip back around again and we'll have problems. Okay, because so, this is just not really that aerodynamically stable. The bottom is not hugely wide in comparison to the top. It can easily flip around. So, then, But that's going to be our little lander, well, not lander, but a little pod stage, our artificial one. And then we're going to add to that by grabbing ourselves a parachute. Uh, or two in this case, and I'm going to bring those up to reasonably high, probably around that kind of line right there. Should get them over. So we've got two of them. And again, we're not going to be going terribly fast sideways, and we should make out the atmosphere before these burn up. But if we wanted to, we could put a payload bay around this entire thing. Uh, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to try simulation without that. And if we do need it, we need it. But um, it'll be much cheaper if we don't. And the pod by itself is 587 at the moment. So we need to configure this as we normally would. Go into custom one. We're going to basically select this to uh, arm the parachute. And then um, we can go down to the bottom here. And we can change the size of these as well. I didn't really show you that previously, but you can change uh, different sizes like this. But I'm not going to worry about that. They appear to be kind of the right size, I guess. And pre-deployment, we're going to leave everything else. Apply to all symmetry counterparts and apply settings. Yes, I think that should apply to all of them. That's that sorted. So now we've got the pod, and let's just call this something. So... Um, Let's just say the manned, uh, well, uh, it's going to be an Osprey first stage. So I guess we could sell it Osprey manned. Yeah. Now, as for Osprey, we have a uh, sub-assembly. And this should give us the tooled stage from the SRP um, solid rocket payload rocket we built last episode. That has 968. And... That may do the job. That may do the job, but let me just save that for a second. And I'm just going to load previous save. I want to see if I've got something that... Um, science is short. Was that tooled? Let's have a look. Tooling. Uh, that was tooled. And this has a probe core on it, and I don't necessarily want the probe core, but... If we just have this, um, that's going to all detach at once. That's the only problem with this. Um, why don't I just use this temporarily? Let's take off this and take off everything here. Uh, actually, I need to start, grab that back again. 
Is that actually the pro main probe core up there? Because if so, I can just grab this. Yes, it is. Good. So let's just save that as well. And we'll save this as... Um, and that's just because I've got a, fa a fairing here. Save this as... Um, Osprey... Probe core for stage. Okay. And we'll just go back again. So let's just don't save that. Open up our Osprey Mand. There we go. And now what we can actually do, I think, is just maybe swap this out. So right now we're 968. So if I take this off for a second and grab that probe core for stage. Now, we're not going to need the probe core section of it, so we can get rid of that. And then reattach. So we're not much different in cost, and we have um, a sort of payload fairing. Now, we could put a payload set of fairings on top of this, um, this separator, this um, procedural separator, or, or rather, uh, what, what do you call it, really? Um, into the interstage base or the payload fairing base. Yeah, uh, but this will do, and it's sort of in line, roughly. We shouldn't have a problem. So let's get rid of that one. And we'll also get rid of these. We don't necessarily need that to pull away too much. And let's take a look at the rocket now. Looks reasonable. Um, and we should be able to... Well, it should be already fueled. Yes, it is already fueled with ethanol. However, it's too heavy. Just a little bit too heavy. So we're going to need to bring that down just a touch, and we're going to do that by using the utilization. So the last episode, okay, seventy-seven. So now it's it's basically light enough to be able to take off. Now there is a workaround. Uh, they get a few people saying you can cheat using this. Yes, I did mention this in the first episode, but I will re-mention it again because people just said it in the comments, so they may have missed it as well. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't have needed to mention it. Um, if you go into structural, some of these clamps or launch towers, particularly, I think, uh, yeah, if we go for a launch stability enhancer, does this have a pump? It does have a pump, right? So if you go for this one, which is your typical KSP launch stability enhancer, and you attach this to the side like this, uh, let's just remove these and bring this up. So that's quite cheap. And we can take this one away. Okay, so if you have something like this, and you were to, say, empty the fuel tank, or leave it as is. In fact, no. If you brought this up, 28. But now if you brought down the fuel, we'd still be more than capable of actually getting out onto the pad, but we would then be able to refuel on the pad because you could enable the fuel pump. Now, in real life, of course, rockets do this. They don't get fueled up in the construction building. But at the same time, um, the only time that KSP checks is when you're in the assembly building. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a problem there as far as that's concerned. However, that seems, seems to be a legitimate way of getting around the problem. And that does mean you can do the same thing to try to get into orbit before you have a launch pad available. Now, we are only just over the, the limits. The limits would be 20 tons, and realistically, engineers are going to add at least, um, well, at least 50% on top of that. So I'm not too bothered if we're slightly over. And uh, if so, then I can just bring this up. Okay. And we don't even need the HTP, I don't think. But uh, yeah, we can bring this up, and then we can refuel it on the pad itself. So let's see how well this actually flies. We're just going to save that. And let's actually just go to uh, the, um, let's go to the simulation. So here we are on the launch pad and you can see everything is being filled on the right hand side. So if you select this kind of thing, this will refill from some theoretical building. It'd be nice if there was a mod, you know, to be able to build facilities for this. That would be really nice. For example, um, again, in real life, you have uh, facilities with large tanks that we could construct to contain this kind of thing because you need to chill everything down or later on when we get into basically cryogenic fuels but for now it's just basically al sort of alcohol it's ethanol and oxygen so yep that's now filled up no if you do this and you uh you leave them empty and bring them out here 
it will take a little bit of time to fill up. So don't just immediately try to take off. You'll find your rocket does not work very well. Or at least it will work very well because it's very light, but then it'll run out of fuel quite quickly. So we now have this available. So we're going to engage autopilot because we're using the gem as standard. Even though this isn't going to go up into orbit, we want it to go by default. So engines go and lift off for our first manned flight. Good. Our first manned flight is going to head up and it should perform very, very similarly to the unmanned flight. The only difference is we were not going to know exactly how what the peri uh, the apoapsis is going to be. Depending on how far that, up, that, that is up, depends on how much g-force is when it comes back down because it could end up being quite ballistic and kill our poor little Kerbal. And that's uh, exactly what happens in real life when there is an abort. If you remember, um, about a year, less than a year ago, there was an abort on the Russian uh, Soyuz and uh, they, I think it was a British astronaut and uh, there was a Russian astronaut. Forget the names, sorry to anyone involved. But yes, they aborted and when that happens it comes back down in a much deeper angle and uh, yes, the g-forces rise. So yep, we are however going to see how all this goes because of course this is a simulation and of course you know, now that we're manned we can look inside and uh, yes, we're spinning with a view of the ground unfortunately. But uh, yeah, we should get more roll control once we go to multiple engine clusters and stuff like that. Anyway, we're about to burn out for the first stage. And that's coming up now. Our APO is going to go into space, which is good because we're going to want that for missions. Well, when I say missions, milestones to get us lots more money. Here we go. And fuel out. And at this point, we can wait as long as we like. I'm just going to wait until we leave the atmosphere, just as before, and then we'll see what happens when I come back down again for um, re-entry. Now, as we'd hit space, and we have just separated, by the way, that's not the rocket broken. Uh, as we just hit space, things are going to move apart from each other, but we do get the opportunity to get a crew report here and get 2.3 science. So in a live vessel environment, we could try and bring other stuff out back with us, but uh, that at least will get us a minimum of stuff before we get the, the recent development loads unlocked to get us more stuff. All right, that's good. And of course, we can now arm our parachute by pressing one. At this point, we just have to wait until we are heading back down again. You'll see here we have some uh, life support in our capsule, food, water and oxygen. We don't need that much oxygen, but if we were going much further, we definitely need an, an, uh, an extra tank of it. Uh, no, uh, we've already used most of the oxygen in this thing to basically uh, to get us up here, so we can't really reuse that. However, there is a lot of electric charge, so we definitely need the life support stuff, but not necessarily electric charge, particularly, uh, well, in fact, that's a good point. We don't have any way to recharge that, so no solar panels yet. And if we have a look, pointing back down this way, you'll see a nice uh, first stage, or spent first stage. That should enter the atmosphere first, I would have thought. Maybe it depends on the aerodynamics. And we're heading back down now, so let's fast forward to the uh, to the atmospheric entry. And then we come to the atmosphere here, you'll see we're dropping quite rapidly. And you'll see that we're already starting to tilt back to our stable, hopefully, stable position around our retrograde vector. So we're going to be coming back down. Now we should see once we start hitting the dense part of the atmosphere, our g-forces here will start rising. And that's the thing I want to watch, because that could go up quite high and to unsurvivable levels. That's 6G, 7G, 8G, 9G, 10G, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, yeah, and um, Jeb has lost consciousness. Uh, did Jeb die? You should be able to survive momentary G-force losses. And we have armed our parachute. So are you going to be okay? Well, we'll see. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jeb. Oh, Jeb's fine. Jeb's fine. He's regained consciousness. That's okay. Now, if that's going to be fine for us to do this, you know, for a short period of time like this. For longer periods of time, you don't want to do that, especially if you need control. In our case, we have automatically armed parachutes. So, really, Jeb is just a passenger in this, in this particular... <laughs> this particular venture, we could alter the ascent path to change that skip out of the atmosphere to bring him in a little bit more gently. Um, 
you can play with that as much as you like. This one appears to be fine for me. Again, the ascent pass, path is just nearly straight up here. We've got we've got basically an unlimited height orbit, basically. So we're going to be just going up to try and get a height record. Um, speed record will be something else. So let's just get rid of that. And of course, coming down at this point is not much of a problem. So we can terminate that. I think I'm happy with that particular uh, simulation. Hopefully he only lost consciousness and didn't die due to simulation. And uh, we can then queue this up to be built. Now for manned missions, one thing I did forget myself, I actually built the, the rocket, it's ready to go, but we actually do need to go through training. So in here in your research and development, you need to assign courses. So in this guard case, you can see our X1. We need the proficiency one at least, and I think the mission one as well. And if you go into these, you're then able to select, I already selected Douglas, uh, he's our basically our replacement for Jeb, and then you press start course, and you'll see in the training window that uh, they are actually currently running the course, and where they'll retire if you don't fly them. So we need to go forwards to day two, uh, sorry, 334 for Douglas to complete things, because if you don't, if you press launch, it's basically going to say you can fill but you can't fill it with anyone because, well, you could also hire someone, but that would cost like 60,000. We don't actually do that. Uh, we do actually need them to go through training first. So let's fast forward. And you'll see now we can go into the courses, go to mission, and now Douglas is available to select. And we can choose any remaining seats for the course itself. But in this case, we just want Douglas. And then just start the course. So again, this is another 10 days forward from where we are right now. And Douglas, hopefully, now should be qualified. So let's see if our craft is still around. Hopefully it hasn't actually been a problem. So yes, you can see Douglas Hamilton is our pilot and it's available for launching. And here we are on the launch pad, live and ready to go. I've changed the orbit altitude to 400 kilometers. That should mean a slightly shallower exit and a hopefully shallower re-entry. Maybe Douglas will even actually not pass out from the um, extreme excitement. So, well, we should get going. Engage the autopilot, fire the engines, and release as soon as the engines come up. There it goes. And off we go. Flying low. That's perfectly fine. We're going to wait until we're much higher up to before we take the crew report, ideally in space. And here we are after stage separation. We are spinning, but that's perfectly fine because uh, we should reorient ourselves when we come back down. Our APO is just under 200 kilometers, so we are going to be into space. And that's our trajectory. It's OK. I would have preferred something flatter. So maybe if we do this again with another different pilot, we have to try no one up, unfortunately. Uh, we would probably put an orbit altitude less than 400 kilometers. In any case, um, Douglas trained is um, well i'm presuming he's actually enjoying it let's see how we go back towards atmospheric re-entry and as before we're starting to stabilize around the rear of the pod and uh, we can just hopefully speed things up a little bit and let's see how fast that g-force rises did we manage to get this thing being flatter i think certainly going up was slower than it did last time but oh that's 12 G, 12 and a half, and nope, that's good, that's better. Yeah, <laughs> Douglas hasn't passed out yet, <laughs> and uh, it's now going back down. So yeah, momentary G-forces of, you know, 11, 12 G is still survivable. It wouldn't be very comfortable, I'm sure, but uh, still survivable. Uh, but we don't want to do that too often. So that's kind of like the maximum we should go for for um, man, at least until we get all the way into orbit at which point then we can bleed our speed slower by hitting the atmosphere at a much more shallow angle. In any case, we have got to go down to the surface, and uh, now we have our parachutes out. There they are. They haven't fully deployed yet. They fully deploy at around a 1,000 uh, kilometer up. That's our first stage hitting the water, and now they should fully deploy. And we're down to a speed of, well, 7, which is more comfortable. Okay, so now we just have to recover the craft and head back to the Space Center. And here we are, and we earned a little bit of science on our way up. There's a crew data report just from just above the water, in space above water, essentially, and 2.3 science it is, so happy to take that. Parts value were recovered. Well, we recovered the pod, which is actually uh, basically quite valuable by comparison to the rest of the rocket, of course. We don't have any stage recovery 
yet on our first stages. We're not SpaceX at this particular point. We're in the 50s somewhere. 1953, I think it is. I think it starts in 1950 anyway. Next, um, Douglas, assignment, <laughs> Douglas Hamilton is ready for the next assignment. One XP gained. Uh, he's still no star pilot. And the following crew members will be on leave. So he's going to be on leave for a good 11 days. And uh, he will now not retire any earlier than year 13. It was year 10. So we basically got an extra three years just by sending him up into space. He's quite happy. And that's something you can do for the other astronauts. Now remember, we've got four of them. He's recovering. He's only halfway through that first level. <laughs> but we do have Teresa, the equivalent of uh, Val. And we have an engineer and a scientist, of course. They're not really there for the flying, of course. So we do want to actually train Teresa. But um, doing that, it depends whether we're going to fly that X-1. There should be time for training in between when you start the building of the craft and launch. So you could set those up and go as well, it seems. Fine. So now what can we do? Well, we did unlock, while that construction was going on, we unlocked early science down here. Which means we have a Geiger counter and we have an iron mass spectrometer. So we should see if we can launch some of those. And we can use our regular science vessel to do so. So we can take something, but we, because those experiments are quite small, we'll need some kind of um, thing to attach them to. Because previously we've used biocapsules. So let's have a look, see what we can actually put them on. So here's our short one bio rocket, and uh, we have a couple of bio samples in there. So what will be interesting is if I just take away this entire section and let's look at our center of mass overlay. So everything's nicely at the bottom. And if I just put in, let's just sort of say we buy both of those because it's 7,000, but we do actually need to buy them anyway. So we're down to 175,000. We did have 180 something. Uh, 182 or so and we can now afford 75 grand for upgrading the launch pad so that's going to be good as well uh however we then want to be able to put a geiger muller counter on here that seems reasonable protect it from the air because the air is going to be the, the central mass is at the bottom and an iron mass spectrometer hopefully you are small enough as well you do seem to be that way and we'll just readjust that into the middle there we go that hasn't changed the center of mass all that much, so that should be good. And yes, we have these two bio capsules, uh, not which are uh, they're forming the body of a probe at the moment because we don't really have much of a probe body. We could use a guidance unit, something along those kind of lines. Uh, this is 123 kilograms, so it's fine because it's been tested, we know it already works, and uh, it does, however, cost a little bit more, but uh, I'm not too concerned about that. And 1600 is not going to break the bank. Fine, so we can turn off the center of mass overlay and we can save this as um, rad for radiation because we're getting, uh, yeah, we're getting multiple radiation experiments on there. And uh, well, one, ex one radiation, one, um, what was it called again? The ion mass spectrometer. Uh, da, 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 da. Charge atoms, molecules, blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay, and the experiment is just mass spectrometry level one. This one is log radiation, no multiple levels there, so we should be okay. Get rid of the fairings, separate and parachute. Good, let's save that and build one. Uh, how much time? 56 days and launch cost of 2,440 in addition to this. So it's gonna cost us about uh, four grand total. Uh, yep, yeah, four grand total. That is fine with me. So out we go. And while building this rocket, it seems that the training, the mission training, that second course expires quite quickly for the astronauts. So if you're going to actually make that, do make sure you do that quite close to the launch so that it doesn't expire on them. It may even be uh, something you want to consider to do um, just as you're ready to start rollout, because rollout generally takes five to ten days or so, depending on the rocket size, etc. And uh, that will give you time for the training, very hopefully. We'll see. Uh, now we have this one to launch. We've got to get everything going and we can engage the autopilot. I'm going to bring this down a little bit to, let's say, 300 or so, and we'll have that fly. We have the science here now ready to take experiments. But we're going to do that once we get up into space for, presumably, the maximum amount of science. Let's see. So off it goes. It's obviously much faster than our man capsule. And we pretty much are not getting any requests for uh, <laughs> any requests for science just yet. Let's wait until we get further up and out. 
Yep, and here as we're fairly high, let's separate the payload fairings and let's separate the first stage. That's going to get it well clear and start us into a spin. And of course, we're now flying high. We would get three for Cosmic Ray Science, even flying high. So this is probably worth doing again at some point. And we will get 0.8, is that? 0.8 for mass spectrometry. But that's still flying high. We need to fast forward to space and let's see if that's any more. So let's get up to 140. Here it comes. There we go. And yes, we would get more. So we're going to take this and we're going to recover it. So four and a half science. We're going to take the mass spectrometry and recover that. So that's another 1.1 science. And now the mission proceeds as before. We can press one to arm the parachutes. And hopefully this thing becomes stable as it comes back down. Because we're at 300 kilometers orbital altitude, uh, we should have something... Uh, whoops. Uh, that's actually coming in exactly the wrong angle, but uh, hopefully this is going to be unstable and flip itself around because we don't have persistent rotation. It uh, it needs to be, um, well, it should be happening quite naturally, but let's see. Let's fast forward upwards and downwards. And now it can't do anything, so let's just bring ourselves down into the thicker part of the atmosphere. This actually should start changing angle, yeah, because it's more unstable and to... Uh, going to get air flying against one side so it'll deflect and that should proceed as normal so I'm not going to show that on camera it should be as previous I will however note that it is actually unbalanced by pro by comparison so the weight of this that is applying a torque and we are spinning around rather than going straight down but that shouldn't really much matter for these early probes we don't have any kind of problem like that even as long as we be very careful it shouldn't be a problem for manned so out we go, and down into the water we go for recovery. And here we go, we're up to nine science now that we have these, so we should be able to go and buy an extra node, hopefully, and that should give us some points that we can then use to basically get further upgrades. So yep, the 1956-57 orbital rocketry is seven science, and we have nine, so that is well worth getting. Solid rocket engines would be nice as well, but it's also seven science. It's far more important for me to be able to get this rocketry. So we're going to take that immediately. And that should give us two left. I don't think we have any node that we can grab for two. Uh, Cause we, oh no, wait, we get supersonic flight. Um, that gives the otter cockpit and a turbo jet. Hmm, I think I wanted the upgrade points and this is a cheap way to get it. We'll have to get more science from, from elsewhere to get this other node, but uh, that should be doable. And now, uh, yes, as I was saying, upgrade points. We've got two upgrade points, so we can now invest in either R&D to unlock more science or VAB to build. I think I'm going to get a couple more in R&D to get us through this faster. And let's take a look at how long that will take. So we've got basic rocketry unlocking in six days, uh, which will be really quite good. What's in basic rocketry? As you might imagine, it sounds like it's basic, but we've already got early rocketry, remember? So this is probably going to be RD-10 something. Um, RD-103, yes, that's good, because we're going to use that, and we'll, let's see what that actually does. So, uh, helium RCS, and nitrous oxide RCS, fine, and thrust veins. Okay, the one we're really interested in is this particular node, but we've got to get through others first. So I'm going to skip forwards until we actually get that upgrade. In fact, no, uh, before I do that, I must remember to actually start the upgrade of our uh, launch pad. That takes it to 60 tons. Yes, it'll render it unusable until the upgrade finishes. Are you sure you want to? Uh, I suppose, yes. So we'll we'll get a facility upgrade. Does that actually gonna get is that actually gonna give us um any upgrade points for doing that? No, sadly not. We're down to 96,000 again, but now we have a launch pad being upgraded. That's gonna take 300 days. Now I suppose we could invest more money in, into piling it, but I really don't want more money right now. Uh is there any well I do want more money, but I don't, I don't want to have the, the funds to be able to fund it that way. So the rest of the milestones we haven't got yet is a crude altitude record of 200 kilometers. We just came low on that one. That will give it an extra eight grand. So as long as we're willing to go steeper, or um, I guess the other way is just to maybe reduce that lead ballast a little bit, and it should still end up with the central mass at the bottom, and we should end up with another crew. We could take the, the, one of the crew members up there, and bring them back down again, maybe um, the equivalent of Val, whoever that is, I can't remember the name. And crew duration record, that's sort of a challenge for life support, so yeah, uh, and they need to be up there for a day. 
So it says suborbital trajectory, but it's more likely orbit. If you go suborbital, that's going to have to be quite a high suborbital, and that means coming back down really fast, and I really probably don't want to actually subject the crew to that kind of thing. Cruise speed rocket we should get as a matter of getting to orbit. You'll see that's 12 grand as well, so those are going to be good once we get to the right size rockets. We're still in quite small rockets at this particular stage. Uh, same thing with the uncrewed ones, and that's fine. Did we get any more um, break the sand barrier crew? Did we not break the sand barrier? Well, um, unless that wasn't there. I need to check. Was that not there? Because we have... Oh, are these, these are missions. Yes. So we can actually take them. We'll get 18 grand advance and 18 grand for completion for break the sound barrier. And we'll get uh, oh, yeah, 30 and 30 for actually breaking, passing the Carmen line. So we can use these to generate even more revenue. We'll be able to get, what was that, 36 and then 60. Uh, so yes, 86. And on top of this, that'll be what, 180, uh, 182? That'll be pretty good. That's exactly what we had before. So yeah, having both of those missions will be good. However, this has three year duration, which is more than enough to be able to re launch that vessel we've already created with a different uh, a different pilot. Remember that our our um, launch pad is, however, being upgraded. So we can choose to fly these. So I'm going to take them both because it's three years and we should have more than enough time to do that. OK, both of those are in and we get 144,000, which is good. And we're ready for the end of the episode, I think. So this episode, we've got manned crew into into orbit basically well, not into orbit into space make that clear that's quite a bit uh, of a different challenge into space and we've also got new science experiments two of them we also get even more science if we send that into flying high and then i should probably load up and head it uh, you know north along the coast up towards washington and new york or down to, uh, towards um well do you want to say head down I don't think we're going to go over, over the Caribbean because it's mostly the same biomes like water, etc. So maybe sort of northwestish in to try and get forest and uh, maybe even like, you know, mountain biomes or something like that. We'll see. We'd have to get we'd have to get quite far over, I think, to actually get any kind of mountains. But anyway, that's uh, a challenge for another day. So I will refly the science rockets once we get access to this again. We're at year four, day 47. So now we pretty much are going to need to wait for our launch, but I don't think we can actually launch anything. It did say that we can't, but sometimes these systems aren't quite ready in RP0 and RP1. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed. Give a thumbs up if you did. Give a subscribe, share, click on the bell if you want notifications, but more importantly, put your comments down below. If you've got particular designs of rockets, feel free to put them on Imager or something like that and put a link down below and the other people can take a look or indeed links across to pre-prepared rockets and stuff like that. We'll see you next episode for some more manned space flight, probably. We'll get those records going so that we have more money. And uh, then we hopefully want to get the upgrades. Next episode, we'll be working on probably the RD-103 rocket, this upgrade right here. And maybe take a look at some of these others as well. I'm not quite sure whether we're going to use them. The RD-103 is the main one I actually wanted to get to. Uh, but there is the Air Ruby upgrade to the AJ-1027, so we could try an expanded version of one of the first rockets we did with the AJ the Air Ruby upper stage and the RD-100 lower stage. Uh, we can upgrade both of those and just see what the performance is like. If we can control it for long enough, we can send that rocket out quite significantly further and uh, see how well it does. Hope you join me then. As always, guys, thanks for watching.